Jackie Robinson, the amazing baseball player. He broke the race barrier in Major League Baseball. A total hero, a civil rights icon, and very appropriately, his uniform. You can find it at the Smithsonian. Totally awesome. Uh, what about Rosa Parks? Remember, she refused to get up and sit in the back of the bus. Good for her. Another civil rights icon. The actual bus where she refused to get up, it's on display at the Henry Ford Museum in Michigan. I got to see that someday. And now this is the latest civil rights icon. A folding chair. A folding chair. Well, it's, it's famous now, the folding chair. I was wondering, is it because some civil rights leader sat down in one and did something special or stood up in one and made a speech? No, because at that Montgomery brawl, somebody used a chair as a weapon against a white woman. You see that? Wow. I mean, that would disturb anybody, anybody. The cops arrested the guy right away. At least they tried to. So the chair, in our warped society, somehow that was seen as a good thing. And people on the Internet are saying the chair should be on display, say, in a museum or a great big mural somewhere with other... Oh, yeah, it could be a weapon used by... Police, right? Use the chair to break down the door. Martin Luther King, he had a chair, a folding chair. <laughs> or Colin Kaepernick. You see Colin Kaepernick? They're all using, yeah, some very famous black people right now using a chair to attack a, a white woman. It's all part of what seems to be a black supremacy movement. I hate the idea of white supremacy. It is disgusting and outrageous. It's also totally overblown and exaggerated as far as it being a threat to America. There are a couple of weirdos out in the woods, and if they ever break the law, they should be arrested. But black supremacy? This is something uh, America is living with every day. The chair, the chairman, right, who hit the person in the, in the head? You know how the New York Times reported that? that? When they did the first big report about this, a fourth man, Reggie Gray, was wanted for questioning by the police after videos showed him wielding a folding chair during the incident. Wielding a folding chair. They felt uncomfortable with the fact that he used the chair to attack a white woman in the head. And oh, by the way, that white woman, just before they gave her the chair, they gave her the kick. Actually, dozens of kicks. She gets knocked down, and watch as... Uh, Two women who happen to be black and the victim there is white. And tell me, I, I think that this is relevant somehow. Uh, right? No. The mainstream media just wants to tell a simple, stupid story. A simple story that they can follow, that's safe for them, that they feel comfortable with. That all the black people are good and all the white people are bad. Life is more complicated, a lot more complicated than these idiots want us to know. This is a cultural moment. Uh, and a significant cultural moment where we're all having a, a good time. It wasn't long before black onlookers came rushing to the co-captain's defense from seemingly everywhere, like he'd thrown up a bat signal to the ancestors, maybe Harriet Tubman herself. The Montgomery brawl, the Alabama dock wallop, and the Alabama sweet tea party. An anthem has been written about it, art is being made, and there are odes to the folding chair inventor, Nathaniel Alexander, who was a black man. See what I mean? I'm bringing this up again because there are dangerous people out there who have not been arrested and are likely to do it again. And this whole stupid thing is encouraging other people to pick up a chair and just hit somebody you don't like. Now, some folks have been arrested, right? And I do think that they that these are genuine arrests. These folks looks to me like they at least two of them broke the law. What are they charged with? Assault. All right. You saw the early, you saw the first part of that video. It was bad. It was bad. Was it racially motivated? There is actually, as far as I can see, no proof of that. Now, they arrested the man, it looked like, who hit the lady with the chair. Take a look at this. Right after he hits, there are two cops who spring into action right away. I mean, how can you not see that and see that it's a crime? And the cops are great. This guy is struggling. They stay with it. Uh, they put him on the ground. He's resisting arrest. 
but they get the cuffs on him. And then something very strange happens. Apparently, they let him go because the name is Reggie Ray. Uh, he was asked to turn himself in. The word went out that they were looking for Reggie Ray for questioning. And yes, he turned himself in. So they let him go, it looks like. Later, he turned himself in a few days later. And what is he charged with? Not assault, but disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct for hitting that lady in the brain. That doesn't seem fair, does it? It's not fair. And we all saw it. Now I want you to show somebody else that needs to be arrested and charged. This individual with the hair. Now, quite frankly, I can't tell the gender of the individual. But what this person did, and for everybody in the world to either not see it purposely or accidentally or ignore it, whatever, is a crime. And he committed the crime. Watch this. Now, he turned the volume off, and you saw this part of the fight, right? Which was part of the overreaction, I think. And you see this lady. She just comes upon it. This is after the boat captain already got attacked. This is after that. She's new to the scene. She sees a fight. The good woman tries to break it up. And watch what happens to her. There she goes. She's immediately grabbed by two individuals, and they start punching, kicking, pulling her hair, and they throw her in the water. Isn't that something? And the media says that this is a, a beautiful moment that should be commemorated in, in museums. Can I see those kicks and that hair pull, a close-up? Who are these people? How are they not part of the story? This is, this is important. And the blonde-haired guy, all right, get a good look at him because he strikes again. Uh, a few moments later, when they kick uh, the, uh, the red dress lady on the ground, uh, he drops by to get a few more punches in. Watch. There he is again. Okay. Got hit in the head with the chair, and he goes in. See? He punches a few more times. Or she. I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> So this is a beautiful thing. Well, according to basically everybody, including conservative media, which allowed itself to be duped on this one, this is a beautiful thing. The Associated Press, their definitive write-up on this. Many see the August 5th ordeal on the riverfront dock in Montgomery as a long-awaited answer to countless calls for help that went unanswered for past black victims of violence and mob attacks. Hmm. Next, please. For Montgomery to have this moment, we needed to see a win. We needed to see our community coming together, and we needed to see justice. That's not justice. I'm sorry. You know, violence is bad no matter who's perpetrating it. And, you know, black supremacy, is that what I call it? I don't like white supremacy. I don't like black supremacy. And black supremacy seems to be very, very fashionable. The New York Times. When did we all decide that we're going to lowercase the W in white and capitalize the B in black? And this happened about 10 seconds ago, all right? Not very recently. There wasn't a full national conversation about that. You can get in trouble if you don't capitalize the B. What about capitalize? I mean, that is supremacy of black over white, right? I mean, it's right. It's black and white. It's, it's right there. Meanwhile, a blonde-headed maniac... Uh, who thinks it's okay to punch people and pull their hair and then throw them in the water, that's somehow okay. <sighs> this kind of messaging, these kinds of episodes that are glorified, it's a poison, and it's infecting the entire country, and it has been for a long time. I want to show you a police officer in Connecticut. This happened this week, Detective Carly Travis. She almost was killed this week by a madman with a hammer, who I think it's... I think it's reasonable to ponder, is this individual motivated by the crazy stuff they're seeing on MSNBC, CNN, and even Fox News? Take a look at him. He's coming right at the cop after he was warned to stop with a hammer in his hand. You know, when did they ever think, when did any person ever think that it's a good idea to run up to a cop with a weapon and not stop, hmm? 
it seems like the messaging out there says cops are bad, right? And they have no authority. They're a vestige of the slave patrol. You've heard that. Watch what happened. Can you put that down, please? What? Can you put that down, please? No. Call your back up, come up hot. Stop! Sorry, that was tough to watch. Um, the guy is injured, but alive. She was injured, minor injury. She's okay. Fired her weapon. Um, this is bad for law enforcement. It's also bad for people who sit around and receive this stuff, this messaging that somehow cops and, well, white people are systemically just bad. I mean, isn't that the portrayal we're kind of bombarded with? every single moment of every single day almost? Here's a suspect, okay? He's a 21-year-old white man. This 21-year-old white male mass murderer. The suspect is believed to be 18 to 20, a white male. Police identified the alleged shooter as a 15-year-old white male. The suspect in custody is white. Police say a 28-year-old white male carrying two handguns crashed a stolen truck into a building. It's humanizing the shooter once again. Yeah, and well. can I point out that the shooter is a white man who is alive after they knew that he had killed eight people. Yeah, Gail was pretty upset that the cops did not kill uh, the white suspect. You know, just do it like they did in the West or something like that. Just uh, the sheriff shows up and kills the guy. What's that all about? And uh, all right, so you can see the demonization. I mean white, just white. There's an edge in their voice when they say white, anchors of all colors. And then the myth and the phantom that is white supremacy. Resurfacing of white supremacy has been just an extraordinary phenomenon in the past few years. Terrorism from white supremacy is the most lethal threat to the homeland today. One of the greatest threats to our national security is domestic terrorism manifested by white supremacists. We are living in a nation that is actually full of racism and white supremacy. All right, they are lying. They're lying. That's not true. Where are the arrests of the white supremacists? Where, where is that happening? Where are they? You know, I, I can't stand them, and if they do uh, any violence, arrest them. Where is that actually happening? But you talk about it like this, and um, something happens. And it's almost like a field day on, on white individuals, right? What did I hear? Uh, this was uh, in retribution for all the things that happened in the past, right? That's not right. Uh, we are providing a false, weird motivation for people who would do violence. That guy with the hammer, I am really interested to know what his media diet has been like, say, since the summer of George Floyd. It's fascinating what gets highlighted by the media and what gets ignored. It all has to do with race, especially when it comes to violent crime. If the victim is white and the perpetrator is black, that is not going to be mentioned. And for whatever reason, that seems to predominate. And actually, statistics suggest that black on white crime is much more prevalent than white on black crime. You can look it up. I don't like white supremacy. I don't like black supremacy anymore. We'll be right back.